Hello everyone, reporting today for First Updates Now, I'm Abhas, and with me here today at the Maryland Tech Invitational, we have Team 11329 Ice Robotics all the way from Indiana. They have just been absolutely incredible this season. Pretty much every league meet qualifier they had, first alliance, uh, winning alliance captain, set one world record or the other, just so incredibly fast. And I mean, look at how beautiful that robot is. They've been featured in our top 25 multiple times. We've been waiting for this interview all season, so we'll get right into it on Behind the Bot. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com FIRST to register your team. Get your off-season events an additional 25 to 100% more viewership by streaming it on fun. We'll donate our Twitch or YouTube channel and help promote your event. Contact admin at firstupdatesnow.com to reserve your off-season date. All right, guys, let's start with uh, first with just the design philosophy. You know, there's just been so many robots this season. Why did you choose this design and how has it worked out? Um, so we really knew from the start um, that at the top level, speed and versatility would be the two main things. So some of the stuff that we do, uh, or our design goal was that we needed to be able to pick up on both sides as well as place on all heights on both sides. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, obviously it's worked out fantastic for you guys. So, I mean, you guys are obviously a very capable team mechanically, software-wise, just everything. So not going for that extension design was definitely a, like, a conscious decision. So it's clearly worked out. Why did you not go for it? Um, so the big thing was that we knew there weren't that many cones on the field. Mm -hmm. um, that being able to get where we needed to be uh, anywhere on the field would be much more important at the low levels as well as at the very high levels um, than a traditional how fast can we stack on the high point. Yeah, of course. No, that makes sense. So let's jump right into your drivetrain. I mean, besides just looking absolutely amazing, there's so much going on here. It works incredibly well. Walk us through it. Any changes you guys have made through the season and just how it works now? Uh, so we really started off with the drivetrain um, pretty much the same as we have it now. It's 13 by 13 inches, allows us to strafe and diagonally pretty much through all the poles. At the very bottom, you'll see we have Quarter inch polycarbonate? Cor yep, wow. no, this is quarter inch um, steel. Oh, yeah. steel, yeah. okay. And then there's the, the oh yeah, oh, and then okay, okay. okay. And, uh, yeah, I didn't see steel. Um, we use standard three wheel odometry, mechnum. Yeah, no, that's that's yeah. fantastic. So, adding that steel and polycarbonate was some was that something you had like right on kickoff day? You said, yeah, we need this. Or was it something you added later? We knew it was something we would want to have, but we didn't have the resources to get steel. So mm -hmm. we ran polycarbonate for a while. Mm -hmm. um, so we still needed to make our entire robot. I believe we went to our first league meet mm -hmm. or two without the steel. Mm -hmm. So it was really just a. It's something that we wanted. But. Yeah. So let's jump into the uh, claw now. Uh, definitely really, really fast, works super well. So walk us through it. I'm sure you guys have had a lot of iterations of it throughout the season. So talk about how it is now, and we'll jump into some iterations after. Uh, we've used a bunch of iteration through our claw. We originally started with very different designs here. So just through iterating, we've done so much here. Yeah, and so now I see you guys are running like an AGFRC servo on there, and then it's just some really, really long fingers. What would you say is like the biggest change you made to your claw that just really leveled up your game? Uh, adding a faster servo here. Uh, each time we close and open the claw, we can do it so much faster than before, yeah. and it's so, so crucial. Yeah, of course. So another thing I'm noticing, we'll jump now into the arm. I see you guys have this beautiful carbon fiber rod construction going on here. So what I want to know behind that, was that your first time exploring, you know, working with carbon fiber and carbon fiber rods, or do you guys have like a lot of experience with it? Yeah, so this was our first time doing carbon fiber, and the reason that we wanted to do carbon fiber because was because after we catted our robot, we realized that our arm was going to end up being really long. Right, so not only does that mean minimizing the weight that's present uh, in the arm itself and even on the end, but uh, we want it to be strong so that it can handle uh, when it slams down on a pole or as we're just kind of swinging it around. Yeah, no, obviously it works just like so incredibly well. Let's talk about the gearbox you have behind this. I see you guys have like both angle adjustment and like pitch adjustment and just, you know, rotating the whole claw around. So walk me through all these chains and bevel gears and axles and everything over here so our viewers can understand. Yeah, so our claw itself is on a virtual four by mechanism. So as we move the arm, the claw more or less stays in place. This makes programming a lot of the presets just generally easier. 
Um, yeah. Uh, we also have uh, wrist adjustment, which is stationed down here, uh, and it gets pulled up with the slides, and it's on a um, coaxial, uh, coaxial floor mechanism such that we can still adjust the adjust the wrist while also moving the arm while only having this single single rod through the through Yeah, the so how has this uh, feature changed throughout the season? Has it just been the same pretty much, or have you made some really big upgrades? The theoretical mechanism itself has been most of the same. Some of the biggest changes we made have been switching out the arm control from a servo to a motor because we realized that it wasn't as fast as we wanted and didn't have the range that we wanted. We also switched from belts, which were originally controlling the arm, to chains because they were slipping and it led to us not having consistent presets. Yeah, so the last thing I want to talk about with you guys is your uh, pole, your pole, like your junction aligner. I see it has a couple neat features on it, so, you know, let's talk about it first. Just give me a walkthrough of it. We'll talk about how it works, and then, you know, maybe we can see it in some action with that junction uh, and watching that beam brake sensor go. Yeah, sure. Uh, do you want to talk about the pole aligner? Uh, yes. Uh, we have here is our pole aligner here, um, which can flip out, and uh, we've made sure that we don't have it out all the time because that's just a liability here. And we've used uh, we've used uh, beam brakes here so that we can go in here and we can sense that the pole is there and drop everything on the uh, pole. Yeah, I know, that's fantastic. And was this something you guys had since day one or did you decide to add it? If so, what inspired that? Uh, after State, we looked at a lot of other teams and the biggest thing that they had was that they could line up each and every time with mm -hmm. something that was always in the same area. Yeah. Yeah, no, that makes a ton of sense. So, Ice Robotics, thank you so much. This has just been absolutely a fantastic interview. Good luck for the rest of the competition. You know, you guys have had some huge matches already. I'm sure you'll continue to have really high-scoring matches uh, for the rest of MTI. So, reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Abhas, and this is Team 11329 Ice Robotics. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com FIRST to register your team. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.